Well, hello and welcome to Multiplays Games. We are on the midweek stream and we are taking a look at Nebuchadnezzar on the PC. Now, I don't know if I said that right. If I haven't, then apologies to the developers. I have some beefs with the developers that we will get on to shortly. This is a game from February 2021 and it is a classic isometric city builder game inviting players to experience the mysterious history and culture of ancient uh, Mesopotamia. Yeah, that. In the campaign, players get to rule over influential historical cities filled with magnificent uh, monuments. That's some words. So we're going to have a quick look at the settings, which is where I have my issues. It does look like this has modding support and some uh, social media platforms down there. We are playing version 1.4.11 S or 5, not sure. Might be S. That's a git. Oh, that's a git repository. No idea. Um, hmm. Maybe a build number. So, settings. Uh, we have all of these on one screen. Uh, my issue with this game is in this section here. Uh, it's not doing resolution and scaling properly. So, it is borderless full screen, not proper full screen. And when you try to set your resolution that is not your desktop resolution, it either ends up rendering in just one corner of the screen, or it renders completely off the screen. So you can only see about that much. The only way that I could get this to scale properly is actually to go and change my desktop resolution to match the display resolution in the game. And I've still had to turn up UI scaling to actually be able to see the text on here. So we've got this set of 1.5. But at least there is UI scaling. You can also play this window mode. Um, allow detailed zoom. But you know, we don't have any tooltip text on any of this stuff. So, I mean, we could take that. See what that does. I have no idea. But it sounds cool. Audio, nice to see that main was turned down to 50% rather than been blasting out at your ears at 100%. We have some key bindings on this side. Um, but I think these are fairly standard for this type of game. It looks like we have some uh, menu key bindings. Wazad for camera movements. Camera rotation, F and G, that's a bit strange. Never mind. Uh, game speed is on Q and E, which is where I would expect. And it's already been assigned, apparently, so I can't reassign the key. Nice! Unless we delete it. Again, not very good. Just allow me to set that, because I've got to delete this, have I? No, I can set it to delete. That's not helpful, is it? But I can set that to Q now. And I can set that to uh, F. So I can set that to delete. That to G. And that to E. What a palaver. What a palaver trying to set those keys, that is. Um... We have a map grid there, size of pedestrians, is that their physical size, or the amount of pedestrians you can have on a map? Don't know, doesn't say, no tooltip text. We can turn on cloud saving, I think I will do that. Uh, auto frequency save, I think we'll increase to 5 minutes, we don't need to save in every minute. Number of auto saves, we'll put that down to 5. Moves by screen edges. Can we not turn off screen scrolling? 
edge scrolling don't look at it that is another problem with this game need to be able to turn off edge scrolling not everybody likes edge scrolling people have multiple monitor setups and it's a pain in the ass when you do if you cannot turn it off so that's your settings um, don't think they're great I'm not impressed by that at all so we're going to have a quick look at the tutorial and then we will get into a campaign. The first five missions of the main campaign service. The tutorial of these missions will explain the basics of the game and give you the space to try them out in practice. So let's do it. Select. Objectives. We've got to get a population of 300. We're going to get 20 wheat and 20 bread. And shack it up at level 12. Uh, Pre pottery Neolithic. A. Was a Near East culture that inhabited the so called Fertile Crescent between 10,000 and 8,700 BC. Before crumpets, that is. There are archaeological artifacts from this culture in the Levantine and Mesopotamia it was preceded by the Natufian culture there's going to be a lot of words in this that I'm going to have to look at closely and try to pronounce that I'm not familiar with Typical housing for this culture consisted of circular houses sunk into the ground with stone foundations. Walls were made of unbaked bricks and floors of terrazzo. The fireplace and cooking area were usually outside. This is the first time in history that we see the development of organised agriculture. Local cereals such as barley and oat were common crops. The wild forms of birds, but they were gradually replaced by cultivated variants. There were no irrigation systems yet, so crops were only grown in areas with sufficient moisture. The development of agriculture was also made possible thanks to the first granaries, which allowed for longer storage thanks to better ventilation and protection from rodents. Granaries were placed outside of hers, but were later gradually moved to special rooms and houses. Murray Bet was an ancient settlement in the west bank of the Euphrates, in today's northern Syria. The city was inhabited between roughly 10,200 and 8,000 BC. The first settlement was during the Natvian culture. The archaeological site was flooded by Lake Azad in 1974. Its diameter was about 75 meters. Well, lots of uh, information there if you like your geography history. So we're going to play... Oh, there's a tooltip text. Shocking. Why didn't we have those before then? Um, normal. I think we'll play normal. Why not? We'll play normal. I'm not sure there's a need to do press any key on the screen like that, is there? Just, you know, there was no information on that screen, just go straight to the game. But don't, don't need it. Your group of nomads has finally found what they were seeking for so long. An area with sufficient fertile soil and a good climate. An ideal place for permanent settlement. And you, as a leader of the group, we have the most important role. You will organise the construction of your new home. Let's begin. It's Gilgamesh, and he's going to be our guide for the first few missions. First thing I'll show you is how to move the windows. Grab any part of the window in the cursor and then move it to its new position. Try I just did try it on you. Close any window, simply right click. Excellent. Since we want to continue, I'll open the window again for you. Thanks. 
now I'll show you how to move around the map. There are three ways. The first is using keys. Oh. So we're right at the edge there, look. We have a mini map. And the viewport. And we can zoom in and zoom out. So those are the maximums of our zooms. Grab the map using the middle mouse button. So, yeah, fantastic. Another function you'll probably be using fantastic ability to frequently speed up the game. The speed is shown in the upper left corner. That'll be that then. I guess we can do plus and minus. Uh, yeah, let's get past that. And skip that. Yeah, I, yeah, I think we've got the idea now. Very useful is also the context menu. You can summon it by right-click anywhere on the map, and it will provide you quick access to the often used actions. Well, apart from if you click on the map, and then that's not what happens. The user interface also has other elements, but I'll explain those later when you need them. What, what if I need them now? Right, we're finally ready to start building. But actually, there's one more thing to show you. Well, then we're not ready, are we? On the left of your screen, you'll notice a few green question marks. Yes, basic controls, on-screen interface, basic e economic models, and constructing buildings. They represent new sections in our game's wiki, where each section contains an in-depth explanation of one of the gameplay mechanics. So if you ever forget how something works, or simply want to find out more, that is the place to look. So now we know. We have a wiki. Now let's start by building a few houses. Houses provide accommodation for the people who work and live in your city. Well, nobody lives here, yeah? So how do we do that then? Next, choose where you want to build a building. Uh, well, first we're to choose it then, we better read that bit there. To build something, first open the respective category in the lower menu, and then select the required building. Um, infrastructure. We get a little windows over there, and that dirt, dirt road. Logistics, no. House, yes. I want to build it there, but it's it's red. So I can't up build that anywhere then. It's red everywhere. Your game's already broken, is it? Am I doing something wrong? I, I can't close that menu either, apparently. I'm sure that houses. It says house, doesn't it? House. House. Aha, it wants us to build them just there. It would have been actually useful if you'd have told us that there was a specific place where you wanted to build it. Because then you wouldn't have confused us, would you, on your little tutorial. So our first settlers have just arrived in our city. Take good care of them, and you're going to need them. Welcome, weary travellers. They can also be built by dragons. So. Bloody hell. So I can't. Because that's in the way. And it's not letting me drag over that. Alright. Now we've got to build a road. So. Let's build a road around that. That was under logistics. No infrastructure. Good. 
we have a road. Excellent, all the houses are now accessible and should soon welcome their new settlers. Since our city is now starting to grow nicely, let's have a look at the mission objectives. Open the advice tab with the information. Using the button on the left panel. Why don't you just highlight the actual button on the UI rather than doing it in a picture there? Just, that'd be easier. You can see that some mission objectives are already complete. The remaining two items ask you to stop pie or wheat and bread. Okay, let's build a farm and start growing wheat. Uh, build a farm in the highlighted area to continue. Where's your highlighted area? There it is. Uh, I think this might be under food production. What are the chances? Let's build a crop farm. Good, the farm is now ready, but it also seems to have a problem. So does it need some fields? I think maybe it's going to need some fields. It doesn't have any fields. What a shocker. But that's where we're going to have to grow our crops. To build a field... I don't think you can build a field, really, can you? Open the menu with an agricultural structure in the bottom left corner of the farm window, then select a wheat field. Um, click on the farm. I think you have to click on the farm. Yes. Okay. There we go. Although these windows are covering everything up, so that's not really helping. So, build fields or pastures. That's the one, I think. No? Wheat field. Okay, excellent, but you might be wondering exactly why 36 fields. If you have a closer look, it will reveal two numbers in the bottom left corner of the car. Will it? In the bottom left. Eighteen of eighteen, eighteen of eighteen. No work. Well, that's thirty six. So the first two represent the current number of fields tended by a given farmer. Second is the maximum number of fields that the farmer can tend. To build fuel fields and the farm won't be fully utilised. Right, thank you very much for that. But what about him? What's he doing? He doing nothing. It's still possible that your farmers are not working yet. Yeah, we can see that. This is caused by the fact each crop can only be cultivated in a certain part of the year. Specifically, wheat can only be sown between January and March. The current month is displayed in the middle of the upper panel. November. So it means the middle of the upper panel on the main screen. So it's not been very specific sometimes about which panel it's talking about. So before we start producing wheat, we can prepare bread production. Before we start ba building a bakery, they're going to tell us about transporting goods. Fantastic. Uh, haulers. Wallers operate automatically. However, the most important thing to keep in mind is they have a limited range. 
This means they won't transport goods to buildings too far from their home building. The range can be displayed using the flag buttons on the hall card. No transport will happen between two buildings out of range of the hauler. Uh, build bakeries. Bakeries. One and two. Build two warehouses. So that was under logistics. One and two. But we need to make sure they're sufficient for the wheat as well as the bread. We can configure them to accept a specific type of good. So if we select that one then. Only accept bread and only accept wheat. Um, I don't want it to accept any of that then. None. That's going to accept all of them. About that one. None. All of them. I think we've done that right. We have done that. Great, and since everything is set up for the successful completion of the mission, I'll take my leave. I'll start off then. End. So we just gotta wait now, but we can speed up time. And then the tutorial did tell us how to do this, which was useful. Can we dismiss these? We have to click on each each of these one of those things <clears throat> in order to uh, close them. I can't right click on them and close them. I can quickly do that actually. I can right click once it's opened up. Well, I suppose that's one way of not having to animate walking. I don't think this is um, Star Trek, but they do appear to have some kind of transportation. Is that because we speed it up? Do they move if we put it to one? No, they still teleport. So basically, they just didn't want to animate any walking or pathfinding. That's what they're doing there. This is fine. It's not necessary for a game like this. And it probably saves on uh, processing power anyway. This pathfinding can be quite tricky to do and it's filled with bugs. They get AI sticking on rocks and things or doing stupid stuff. Normally down to the way the pathfinding works. So how we got them? We've got all the breads, but we don't have all the weeds. Why don't we have any weeds? That's our weeds. We've got a maximum of breads, but our, our weeds are not going up. Why not? Now they are. I think we're about to win. Come on, we need two more weeks. March. April. Zoom in anymore. 
we can one more step. Mission complete. We are winners there. That was um, certainly a mission. Let's do the next one. Our objective is to get a population of 900 and have some poor houses. Yeah. They're the first culture to feature rectangular houses, apparently. Round houses are cool. Tell Aswad. I don't think you're supposed to tell him. I think mean, that's just the name. There's a large ancient settlement located about 50 kilometers from today's Damascus in Syria. And Damascus is the capital, isn't it? I'm sorry. The settlement was inhabited between 8700 and 7500 BC before calculators. The archaeological site was discovered in 1967 and has a diameter of approximately 250 meters. Tell Aswad, not his name, offers an important window into PPNB. I'm guessing that's pre-pottery Neolithic B. But I didn't want to write it all out. And especially into how the organisation of work and society progressed in this period. Slowly, I should think. Alright, I'm going to play a normal difficulty again. Yeah, you see, I mean, I know it's pretty artwork, but I don't need to press any key to continue, just continue. After a long search, you finally find a place suitable for your new settlement. In addition to fertile soil, there are many grazing animals in the vicinity. In fact, seeing them, you begin to wonder whether hunting them is really the best one could do. Let's try something different. We could capture them and farm them. Greetings and welcome back. In this mission I'll show you how to distribute goods and food you make to create a larger and more prosperous city. He's already built a few houses for us, thanks. So we can go straight to the more interesting part. Oh and as usual you can simply quit the tutorial by pressing the end button. First, we need to find our current needs for our houses. Open the house window and then we'll continue. Right now, we're just interested in the left part of the window. Here you can find the requirements for each available level. If you secure all the required goods for a house, the house will be promoted. But be warned, the house will continuously consume these goods. And if we run out, this level will drop. Build one market next to the house in the highlighted area to continue. That been the logistics? No. 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 Services. Poor market. Now he is going to tell us more about how work slots work. A work building will never do anything on its own. Instead, they have several slots that need to be occupied by a specific profession. And then it will perform the designated work. So. Uh, plus. Where's the plus? There isn't a plus. I've only got minuses there. Each slot requires a certain number of workers recruited from the city inhabitants to do the related work. The number of workers play in the bottom of the left corner of the portrait. But they don't have any work. Hire one bread seller. Bread. What was that about? doing pluses then. And one milk seller.
Good. The next image shows where your current internal storage is displayed in the work building window. We have nothing. Now you get the opportunity to show me what you've learned in the previous mission build one farm and wheat fields, bakeries and livestock farm. Go! We need to build it against a road. Uh, so we want one farm here. A crop farm, which we are going to put there. We need to build a field. And it wanted us to have wheat fields, so yes. Good. And bakeries, we need two bakeries. Uh, right, so bakery. Okay, a bakery there, and a bakery there. And we also needed the warehouses. We put a warehouse there and a warehouse Well, let's put the warehouse there and we'll build a road and then it's all joined up, good here we need to oh, let's cover in the windows. Get just wheat. Here I think we should have bread and milk. Right, now we also need to do a livestock farm. So let's put our livestock farm on this side. I think. Do they need grass to graze, do you think? They probably do, don't they? So let's build another road. There. And we do a livestock farm. I think we're all set. What is that saying then? Maybe it's going to tell us about roots in a bit. Getting anything here? Don't look like it.
Well, they've got roots now, I think. Maybe that's what they needed. Oh, yes, we're getting some bread now, look. Hopefully we'll get some milk as well. Uh, let's see, he's saying he hasn't got a road. This. this building is not connected to the road network, yes. Okay. Well, I don't know how we can do that then. Because there's fields there, so can we do that? Maybe? I think perhaps we need to do another road. Oops. Do a route. Maybe. No. Okay, so that seemed to work. Excellent, but how do we know that our production can cover demand? Open the advice tab. And we can't drag you. Why can't we drag you? You can drag all the windows, but now we can't. Here you'll find an estimate of the current annual production and consumption of each type of good in your city. These estimates assume that each lot has enough workers so there are no transport delays. Here you can also find the current annual production and consumption as well as current efficiency. Since even a well-known working transport system can experience minor fluctuations, I recommend keeping a small reserve in production. But now let's go back to the warning we saw above the markets that are actually related to distribution of goods. The one that says the sun does not have any routes to follow. But yeah, we've sorted that. Um, yeah, we've done that, mate. Now, we need to do it some more, apparently. Do we? Configure route aspect tool for checking points. What's going on here? Where have my things gone? There they are, again. Yeah, I've, I've done that. We've got to do the whole block of houses, have we? covered.
Excellent. And not the most efficient route, I'm sure. But it is a route nonetheless. You should now see your houses gradually receive bread and milk. Kinda. Each house that receives both resources will increase its level and be able to accommodate new inhabitants. Important note. In most cases you won't be able to satisfy the needs of a whole block of houses. During the first round trip of a cellar, in fact, some houses might first lose a level if they previously attained before the level of the whole block goes up. It's completely fine, certainly not necessary to immediately hire a new cellar, just check your production can cover the consumption. And that's all, you did great, the mission will complete as soon as the house is level up. Thank you Gilgamesh. We certainly are doing fine. So it is teaching us the basics and so far things are quite slow. Uh, it's probably doing us at quite a reasonable pace actually because although the concepts aren't difficult some of the UIs are a little bit convoluted like that pathfinding stuff or path setting stuff. Um, but it does show icons flashing above things to let you know there's something wrong, so I do like seeing that. We'll try this third mission and see what's going on here. Here we need a population of 1,350 and we need some standard houses. Um, all some words there. And we're in Iridu. Iridu was the southernmost Sumerian city. It was founded in 50, uh, 5,400 BC. And that's uh, before cucumbers and is considered one of the oldest cities in the world according to the Sumerian king list Erdu, or Eridu was the first city in the world hmm. it has a special place in the Sumerian mythology as the home of the god Enki Enki really? fine Eridu was abandoned in around 600 BC, probably due to significant rise of the sailing water table and desertification caused by intense irrigation. You farm too much. So let's play this on normal. Press any key. It's time to dig. Your people have been growing crops and the fertile soil near the river since time immemorial. However, your population grows. This form of agriculture becomes inefficient. It might be time to start a different approach to irrigation. Good. Build one livestock farm in the highlighted area to continue. Where is our water? Is that it? Well, that looks like sea. Okay, let's build a farm. Livestock. And we want that stuff. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We didn't build it in the right place, did we not? Delete. Delete. I want to delete. Oh no, we did. Also build a crop farm. There we go. And build irrigation canals in the highlighted area to continue. Infrastructure. Irrigation canal. Fantastic. Build one pump in the highlighted area. Yeah, it's hiding these things really well. Uh, infrastructure, irrigation pump. Yay. Build two additional pumps.
connect them to the system. And build a warehouse. No, it's a house, not a warehouse. We need to connect the farm and the warehouse to the rest of the map. Build a road. We do have a slight issue with your volume levels not being consistent there. The sound is louder than the other one. Alright, we have a raid. Build at least 36 wheat fields and 36 goat pastures. So let's build a wheat thingy jobby. And pastures. Go to goats. Five exclamation mark. Some slots are not fully occupied. Eighteen and eighteen, that's pretty occupied. So I'm not sure entirely what he means by that, but I don't think that that's a problem. I know show you a more advanced technique for setting up warehouses. You might have already noticed space is a valuable resource. Perhaps even the most valuable ones. So building a separate warehouse for each something's good is often not the best approach. I'll show you with your own. Yeah, shut up, geese. This warehouse will be used to store products from farms, while all the buildings will take the products they need from the warehouse. We need to guarantee that warehouses will always have enough space. So we'll deactivate all goods for the warehouse except for wheat and milk. Yeah, we did. Ching, ching. To continue set the maximum warehouse capacity for wheat to 28 and milk to 8. 8. 28. Good. You might be wondering why we set precisely to this ratio. And the reason is simple. Milk is produced at the same rate throughout the year. Wheat is only harvested in a few months of the year. This means we need more space to handle the wheat in a short space of time. Don't be afraid to experiment. And the last thing I'd like to show you in this mission is the info layer. The info layer is a very important tool that can provide crucial aid when searching for problems in your city. You can activate it by using the goods button in the upper panel. Goods. 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 No, 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 Sam. Oh, you've got to click on any of the goods. Good. It might not be showing too much information right now. But this function will be very useful in the future. Detailed description is available in the advice help panel. You also find some press. Open the advice panel. And that's all. We can now proceed to build in your city. Yes. Uh, is that it? It didn't end like the other ones.
Oh, we're going to build the population up. Yes, right, so we need some houses then. Housings. Do we have any... Have we got? We do have gold there, so there might be a restriction on, on that. Yes. So we've got 15 housings. We might want... Actually, let's get rid of that one. So we can build a road through here. that might be useful. And if we build a... Well, we've got wheat and food, so we need to have... a bakery. So let's put the bakery there and there. And we'll put another warehouse. Just there. And then we need a marketplace. Can't put it there. We can't put it there. But we can put it there. And we need to have a cellar and a cellar. A cellar of bread. A cellar of milk. this we don't want wheat or milk we do want bread yeah we need to do a route don't we do a plus route so go down there We ought to have another road that leads back to the other road. Of course there's a rock in the way. Right. Let's try that on the marketplace again. as well. So you can do it there. There. Come back again. We have roots. You don't have milk though. We had this problem before. said before there was something about the roots and them not being able to reach it so what if we 
get rid of that. Put in the road. I mean, we surely have enough route to the warehouse now. Why don't we like, let these people have some bread, uh, some milk? Maybe that will help. Let's not let them have any milk there. Yeah. She don't want to know, does she? Yeah, there's definitely something weird about the way that that works. Still missing resources, right? Okay. Why don't we then demolish that and that and that? Uh, not look at. Right between the two. Cellar and the milk cellar. And we'll do a root for you. A rooty root. In fact, let us just destroy these houses. Doing all the routes. Yeah, you can do the same.
And she's still missing resources. I just don't know why. There can't be any problem now, because that is right close by. Okay, so our population is fine now. We need to get them up to standard houses. Our population's going up. Let's speed up time. So we can break the... the uh, Population level at least. Don't leave. standard is though we're not getting enough what ceramics oh okay and we need to build ceramics as well ceramics workshop and maybe we need a clay mine as well industry Play mine. Let's get a road for the clay mine. Do we need to? No, we don't need to do anything. No. That is you. To a producer. No, do we not need to do that? Hmm. It says he's missing resources. Well, let's leave the one there. We're going to need somebody else in the market to sell ceramics, aren't we? So let us you do a. Uh, a little doobly do around there. And they're all distributed now. two of these. Need to do a a checkpoint, do we? a warehouse. 
You can go around there then. That's a lot of wheat. Maybe we need to do another bakery. There was the bakery, that's the well. That's the ceramics. That's a market. That's a shack. Do we have a a gap there? We do have a gap there, though. So why don't we? I don't think we've got a gap through there. There's a bakery, and that's a shack. So let's get rid of the shack there, and we'll build another bakery right next to it. set up now with all the things that we have I mean, we, we could build a stone road maybe a stone road makes things more efficient than having dirt roads that's a standard house we've got eight standard houses now got five, six, seven. I think we get the basic idea anyway. Can we hit 16? That's the question. Eleven, twelve. Come on now. Four more. No, we've gone back down to eleven. Gone down to eight. So what we lack in bread. I mean, is there any way that we can build another farm?
What about irrigation then? Can we irrigate you? Not unless we delete. It's a bit annoying you can't do that. I don't think that's working. I mean, we could put a farm here, couldn't we? extend this far. No. No we can't. seem to help. Okay. So he has got some build a road there with that link is it I think it is gonna let us do that good Probably build irrigation a bit further up here. Look. But we're not reaching these level 16 hours, are we? Yeah, I mean, I kind of like this. But this, these, I'd like to be able to demolish these, and that's not something we can do. I mean, I'm sure that they could mine stuff. But they have pickaxes, I'm sure. But I don't think we're going to reach um, 16 because it's going down. But maybe I need to just have a rethink about this irrigation and where our farms are. We've got enough bread on these things now. We haven't got enough bread on these. Maybe we need. We do need more farms to do more wheat. Interesting uh, builder anyway, I think. But that is all from me for today. I shall be back again at the weekend with another game from One Part of Shame. Until then, I hope you have a pleasant evening and I shall see you later.